Hello, how are we good? Everybody's here, T3. Welcome. I'm in. Uh, just get my camera. Ready for a nice cup of tea. I hope we're good. Uh, an array of biscuits today for me. I've got a cheeky ginger nut. Good Dunkin' biscuit ginger nut. And um, I've got chocolate digestive. Does anybody else keep chocolate digestives in the fridge? I'll keep chocolate digestives in the fridge. So just do me tea. Uh, a few people coming on, lovely. Oh, we're all good. Thursday, got my helper heroes mug again. Heroes, clutch the NHS. Look on for that, and I've just got tea. I'm going tea now, really. Um, it's tea all the time. Um, so I've got a question because Peter, we like a question at the start, and I was running out of tea questions. So I've kind of got a tea related question. And um, because I'm London born, um, I'm London born. Um, so some people are not keeping their yeah, biscuits in the fridge. But so I'm just going to give it a try. It just makes the chocolate a bit better. Macroft, no, I like them soft. Also got a, with an expert on who will be used to keeping food in many a different place. Afternoon, Chris. That's a man who will have food all over his workplace, if I'm correct. Um, but my question today, actually, might suit the Londoners a wee bit better. And my question is, because um, there's a lot of old programmes on TV, and uh, one of the old programmes that's on TV is the Sweeney. And because um, this is tea related, really, kettle, yeah, so cockney rhyming slang, why is a watch called a kettle? There we go. That's my question. So if you know, pop that in the comments. So why is a watch called a kettle? Yeah, in, in cockney rhyming slang. And I'm expecting all my West Country friends to nail that. So uh, why is a watch called a kettle? So type it in if you think you know. Um, 11 people on now. Um, <laughs> because it rhymes with metal. Um, it, it's so... <laughs> uh, no, I can't, I can't let you have that, I'm afraid. Um, but, but I will cut you some slack because you're not London-born. Um, so, keep, so keep guessing. Um, watches are made of metal though, generally. That's so maybe I laughing out loud is not helpful, is it really? Um, right, anyway, we better do some work. Uh, nobody else is guessing because I'm clearly human, humiliating people now. Um, and watches have metal bits, no good, yeah. No, <laughs> I, see, I see what you're doing now. Uh, it's good, Grace. Uh, right, so we better do, well, I'll do what I'm meant to be doing because I could just do copy around slang for 10 minutes. Maybe I'll do that, on, maybe I'll do that next Tuesday. What we're going to do today. Is um is we're gonna, we're going to uh, do a bit of emotional intelligence. That's what we're going to try. I'm a bit disturbed that I haven't had a ridiculous guest from Matt, Matt Croft yet. Um, so I'm thinking maybe he's just logged off or he's googling it so as he can look good and get an answer right. But we're going to do some emotional intelligence today. Just going to give you a quick overview of what emotional intelligence is and the parts of it. Um, so emotional intelligence now is seen as a real key thing. In fact, at a point where employers are now looking for people who are emotionally intelligent, have a big EQ rather than a higher IQ. So that's why it's become more and more important. It's, it's about being, into, A, in touch with your emotions, but B, in touch with other people, people's emotions. If you've got a friend who, you know, you kind of enjoy being with, they kind of get you, that's probably because they've got good emotional intelligence. They kind of understand people, a person you want to be around. One of my colleagues talks about um, radiators and drains. And um, if you've got a friend who's a radiator, keeps you warm, you want to stand by them. Um, what I would suggest is they are probably emotionally intelligent. So that's what we're going to look at a little bit. Um, it, it's how you recognize your own emotions and respond to them. Um, the guy's work I'm going to talk about today is a guy called Daniel Goldman, who's probably currently the most, most foremost thinker of AI. It's kind of moved through the ages a little bit, but Goldman's the guy who's, who's done a lot of work at the moment. He's broken it down into, into five key areas, which I'm going to look at. And the first piece is about self-awareness. It's about understanding yourself. The second thing is a little bit about self-regulation. So once once we uh, once we understand, Matt Croft's just come in with an answer. I watch his tick and Kel's click. Best I could do. It's brilliant. It's clearly incorrect, Matt. Um, so self-awareness, self-regulation. So it's one thing to, to know what we're doing, but the second thing is you've got to self-regulate. And we also talk about self-motivation, our social skills, and our empathy with other people. So they're the, kind of the five key bits that we're going to have a look at. 
So I'm going to start with um, self-awareness, which I think is really important. We've got to understand what, what kind of causes us to behave in certain ways. Maybe a little bit what our stress points, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't really like travel. I, I, I don't really like uh, traffic jams. That, that really stresses me a little bit. Um, I don't enjoy those. And I know that causes a bad reaction in me. But unfortunately, what I, what I sometimes can't do, although it's a lot easier at the moment, is, um, you know, sometimes I have to, have to sit in traffic. So it's that self-awareness of understanding you know, that it's going to cause me a bit of angst, but I can't change that. So that's a, a little bit of self-awareness. Now, another thing that um, potentially, we've got, everybody's got a friend and they say, oh, I tell it like it is. I just tell it like it is, then everybody knows where they stand. And what I would say is that is quite good, you know, self-awareness, because they're kind of, letting people know that sometimes they might have a controversial viewpoint or a challenging viewpoint. But, but what they're not great at is self-regulation because they're just almost allowing themselves. If I just tell people this is what I'm going to say, then that's fine. But but that doesn't mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to be rude. But now I've told you I'm going to be rude. That's all right. So self-awareness is quite high, self-regulation very low. But how can we be, be better at self-awareness? Uh, one of the things I've kind of mentioned uh, before is about journaling. Uh, you can write things down, see where pressure hits you, that kind of thing. We can slow down a little bit, honest self-assessments of ourselves, or we can ask trusted colleagues and friends. I think they're, they're good ways to, to kind of help. So, you know, professionally, we might look at a 360, something along those lines. That's something that can give us a good, good assessment from outside about us and heighten our self-awareness. Anything you can do, almost look in that mirror and, and, and see what happens. Be aware when your emotions are, are provoking your response. That's the first self-awareness. Now, the self-regulation goes hand in hand with that. Self-awareness is really key to, to emotional intelligence. But self-regulation becomes important because it's, what, what do I do to, to kind of stop it? Is there something that I don't need to do? So some remote emotions are good to get out, to push out. Grief is a good emotion to show, whereas anger is less of a good em um, emotion to show. Um, so some emotions we want to see, some emotions we want to hold, we want to channel, we want to defer. Um, so what can we do? We can be uh, a lot calmer. That's where things like back to those um, back to those apps, calm, headspace, they're good. They just give you a little bit of time. Know where your pressure points are and, and maybe change. So I said about driving, do some work out and about, and I always have to come back down the M25 when, when the roads are busy. And um, I have to make that decision. My journey is going to take me probably twice as long in a rush hour. So I make the call. It's like, well, do I leave because I want to be home at a certain time? Or shall I just stay where I'm working and maybe just have a coffee, maybe relax, and then leave at seven and get home quicker? Now, if I choose to leave in the rush hour, I have to say my journey time is going to be twice as long, minimum. Twice as long, minimum. Obviously, if I get home quicker, it's, it's a bonus. But, but it's that self-regulation. Allow that and say, OK, I know what's going to happen. And my decision is I'm either going to come off um, I'm going to finish earlier or I'm going to go home later or something along those lines. But what can I do to change it? If I can't change it, don't worry about it. Coffee's influence and concern. Only only change what you can influence. Don't get caught up in your circle of concern. So self-awareness, self-regulation, go hand in hand. Now, empathy, understanding other people. Right? We talk a lot about perceptual positions. Try and put yourself in the other person's shoes. Um, now, one of the things I'd like this to is um, I used to coach um, a lot of kids football team and um, it was quite interesting there because you'd have a player's viewpoint. That's a very clear viewpoint. You'd have the coach's viewpoint. That's the second viewpoint. And the third viewpoint would be that of the referee. And they're the three perceptual positions. The person it happens to, um, the person who sees it from uh, afar, a second point of view, and the, the referee is the neutral. And they're the positions. It's always very easy to see things from our own point of view. Um, learn, to, learn to pick up other people's body language um, and more and more I think we're having to be better at this on things like Zoom and Teams, Google um, Google Hangouts because we're, we're picking it up a lot better and even over these eight weeks we've got better at reading body language online ask feeling questions so ask people how people feel about something rather than just always go down a logical route and try to avoid stereotypes and any any stereotypes, whether it's about job, gender, race, religion, it doesn't matter. Avoid those stereotypes that we hang in. Like um, that my client base, you know, sometimes it's easier to, to talk about people in finance or something like that, or some of these 
doing this as a job or somebody's a train driver so they're going to be like this um, so try and genuinely listen to other 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 people's point of views and listening is easy you know, people like me will often talk about listen active listening and that's kind of what i'd encourage you to do how how do we do it we genuinely show that we've listened by repeating back by asking them how they feel about what we've said and how they feel about what they've said to show some empathy social skills well it's down to communication but um emotionally intelligent people uh, resolve conflict that's what they're good at they give out praise and make me feel good so that's good so I'm, that's why i'm attracted to certain people if they give praise things along those lines so if you'll click thumbs up that'd help me massively uh but give but the giving out of praise will will help and motivate um, they're good they're good team workers i think um in the current time sometimes to, to improve your social skills thank you the two people who clicked it um to 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 come offline for people wow that's great it really feeling good um and we can go offline so we have to go face to face a little bit more i know that's really hard in at this moment in time but that's the kind of thing we want to look for and think about your tone and uh just just how how do you come across what how you know and finally, it's, it's motivation. It's your self-motivation. Um, how do you self-motivate? What gets you out of bed in the morning? If you want people to follow you, believe you, um, ask yourself the question, why should anybody follow me? What am I bringing to the party? What is it that, that what's going to be my legacy and why will people want to come with me? Um, find out what, you do, what you're doing and love it. Try and love what you do. If you don't love what you do, hi, Sarah, it's great to see you. Um, finally, you know, love what you do, understand your values, um, what makes you tick, and do the job that you enjoy. It makes it so much easier. Um, but understanding your values, don't get caught up always in corporate values. One of my values at, at work, even at work, is to have a laugh. Um, it's really hard to find a business with that value. My organisation has a value of fun. It's quite close. So, so don't feel that you have to talk in, in value speak when you're talking about personal values. But make sure they, they land in your job in there somewhere. Challenge yourself to do something different. And I think in the, in the climate that we're working in at the moment, we've got this massive opportunity to do something different. Um, so challenge yourself, put yourself out there, um, motivate yourself to be better than you were yesterday. And um, and um, I, I think with with those things, uh, good motivated people, strong AI people, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Um, so, that, so they're the kind of questions you'd ask. So there we go, five simple tips. But Google Daniel Goldman. There's there's lots of stuff out there. It's always worth watching. But that communication thing, actually, I try and get. Um, a, it's just come to me now. Otherwise, I'm a bit all prepared. But there's a there's a little TED talk by a guy called Julian Treasure, and that's a really good communication um, little TED talk. We we'll try and get that up in the comments after. Um, but that's a really worthwhile, like 10, 15 minutes, just about the the the, the no nos of communication what we shouldn't be doing, a guy called Julian Treasure. But we'll make sure that goes into the comments post. But that's definitely worth watching. Now, what have we got? Um, so we've got um, Matt came in with tea time, tea kettle, time watch, boom. Um, Chris says, think time equals bird, Matt, as in bird, lion, time. That's just words you've typed, Chris. I've got no idea. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, let me tell you why a kettle is known as a watch. And you'll see this if you can see an old runner of the, uh, the Sweeney. And it was one that mind or anything along those lines. Um, and it is rhyming slang. It is quite simply rhyming slang. And it is kettle and hob, fob, fob watch. It's as simple as that, this rhyming slang. Um, so not a problem. Anyway, next week, it's learning at work week. And I'm doing a two-parter. It's a bit it's a bit of an EastEnders kind of thing. So I'm going to do part one and then part two. <laughs> before my time for that. The, the rerun of the swing has been Grace, don't, don't have me on Ray Winston. I know that was in there. Ray Winston and Plan B, rerun of the Sweeney. What's a fob watch? It's a, it's on a little chain that goes in that goes in the waistcoat pockets. What is going on here? Who, who is watching? I can't believe these people know that. Um, so next week, next week I'm going to do communication styles, one of my favourite topics. We're going to do it two part. So this is a great life skill. Never mind business skill. This is a this is a kind of a great uh, life skill. So we, we see people and they communicate differently. What I'm going to do on the Tuesday is I'm just going to talk about the different styles and the, and how those people come across. And then on a Thursday, I'm going to give you some tips on how to communicate and influence those people. So that's what we've got. We've got a two-parter next week. I'm looking forward to that. Um, nurses wear them. Nurses, no, they're just like the little pin ones. 
but they so they're, and they're always upside down. So when they tip them up, they go across a gent's slight little waistcoat, you know, like on a chain and that. Oh, I can't believe I've spent ten minutes talking about watches. Um, but anyway, you you everybody stay safe, and um, I will see you next Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Don't forget to clap tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, spread the word. Bung this on your Facebook, bang it on your Insta, stick it on your Twitter, anywhere. Let's get some people. <laughs> All right. The watch debate goes on. I'll see you next week, guys. <laughs>